Yeah, join audio. Yeah, start video. There you go. What do you mean I'm using another computer? No, I'm using the computer's audio. Okay, Jenna, yes. Tommy's not here. And Garrett's not here, even though I sent this invites, but I do have Garrett back. Okay. And um where am I going? It's not choosing it. Hmm. Hey, that's cool. So I'm learning stuff, but these aren't these aren't what I want. Um so if I just uh, Oh now I'm talking. I don't know what the echo test was. So my guess is uh, well you gotta tell me what what you see here in a second. <clears throat> Oh, son of a gun, son of a gun, son of a gun, gun, gun. What can I do? Move this. That's not what I want. Blanky blank. I wish, hmm. I don't want to stop sharing. Here I go. Maybe this is the only way this is going to work. Yay. Hey, do you see? A uh, thing that says nine elements of digital citizenship. No. Yeah. Yes. Good. Hey, gentlemen. Yeah. Paper. You're here to learn. Hey. Okay. Headline for your notes is nine elements of digital citizenship. So I'm giving you a second to get that bit of notes. Yes. <clears throat> All right. I'll stay near near uh, the mic so much so that Jenna can see my mask face, but so that she can hear me talk about all of this. Okay. So I want to share this with you uh, in uh, Schoology. You'll be able to go to this original website if you feel like you need additional information. Um, I am playing with whether or not to flip this, which means assigning you like research work. Um, I do believe what I probably will do is maybe what we'll do is we'll collaborate on a website so we're actually going to be doing some stuff before I teach you about uh, how to do a site instead of a page but collaborating what we'll do is you won't be responsible for a whole site yet right we'll learn about that in tutorial two uh, but each of you will be responsible for a page and all of these pages will be part of one site. I got to figure out some of how to do that with Glitz. I, I was working on it this summer and I believe, I believe there's a way that we can do that, but you'll, you'll have to wait for me, whether I, that's tomorrow or Friday or Monday. Um, but expect that that's coming. Also expect that le next Friday, you will have a quiz over this information. Okay, so this is not coding. This isn't about making a web page. Uh, this is part of computer science. In a way, it's a little bit of cross-curricular kind of stuff with uh, um, social studies. It's like responsibility and ethics and law. Um, ideally, we're going to have some conversations. So even if you're gone, uh, I have uh, the invite is a link in Schoology, so I shouldn't necessarily have to email it to you. Although I did email it to Tommy and um, Garrett, I, I hope that Garrett's not sick. My understanding was he was just quarantined and his mom was sick, but that's probably shouldn't talk about that. I don't know anything about anything. Anyway, you can participate in the discussions, okay? And all those discussions should help you. You may, I want you to do this, don't only write what's on the screen. 
okay? Write whatever comes into your head. If you've got ideas, it's called annotating. To annotate means you're kind of adding to the notes, okay? You may write more than you see, okay? Um, and one, one reason, and I'm sorry I haven't done it yet. I didn't know you were going to be back for, for one thing, Andy. And I, I'm totally new on the Zoom thing. So far, so good. You can still hear me? I have the volume turned down on her. Anyway, um, anyway, you know another another reason for me to give you the slideshow is not for you to get ahead, because each day we want to have actual discussion. I want you to actually think. You're welcome to ask questions, not just to me, but of each other. You're welcome to challenge each other, so long as we don't get in this big old fight. Because there are some, uh, there might be some opinions in this, but there are nine things that we want to keep in mind and, and think about. You can tell me if I'm muffled, like when I have my mask on, because um, I don't have that microphone collar thing. Anyway, let me go on. So you have this much written, okay? There's nine things that you're looking for. Uh, what I, what I was about to say was one reason for me to get it on there for you is not for everybody to get ahead but so that you'll be able to access it on whatever device you need to, Andy, to see it here. But first thing is some questions. Okay, I wanna deal with questions first. Okay, well, what I'm gonna say is this. I'm glad you asked that, Garrett. I noticed that you started writing already. No, it's like every other slide. The first slides are going to be questions. It's the second slide that you need to write down. Jenna, and if there's Tommy or anybody else, the first slide, the questions, you need to think about them. If you want to, either write them down or take a screenshot of them. That's your business. Okay, it's the second screen, the second screen, the second slide. I'll tell you, the one that's a definition. That's what you write down. Although, before we even get there, I noticed that you had a little sticker shock. You're, you're intimidated. Oh my gosh, we have to write all of that? When we get to the slide where you do need to write, again, I'm always telling my classes this, make sure that you summarize, that you use shorthand, that you abbreviate. So yes, you're gonna need to get all the information, but no, you're not going to have to have every single word, okay? But no step up. This is high school. This isn't junior high. Okay. So digital access is the first of these nine elements. So if you end up with this, this page for our website, you're probably going to want to be thinking about all of these things. Okay, so we're at two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at that. We got nine elements and we got nine members of our class, albeit Jenna is here virtually and two people are absent. But okay, so be thinking about which of the nine you would like. I want to try and make it fair, but because there's nine of you and nine elements, you may not necessarily get the one you want. But be thinking. Um, what digital access essentially means is full participation in the virtual society. Now, when I used to talk about this in civics class, and I don't know whether I taught it to, um, to Travis's class, it's been a few years since I had a unit on digital citizenship. Uh, you know, we talk about what's the difference between a right and a privilege. The privilege, you kind of, you need to earn. If we're really living in a meritocracy, you would have to earn. And, you know, you got to work for it or not everybody can afford it. And if you can afford it, tough being too bad for you. The right, a right is something that we recognize, hey, that's a basic need. Everybody needs that. For things to be fair. And as a matter of fact, yeah, it's interesting. You can get in arguments and debates on that because 
and water. It seems like they're right. But there's some people that say, well, no, we do have to pay a water bill. Okay, but that's one of the things that our society did. And you can get out of shape if you're a libertarian and accuse it of being socialism. But if you want amenities, you live in a certain place that has those amenities. So you live out in the country and maybe you either get rural water or you got to get well water. Well, you might want to test it and make sure it's safe. Maybe you want to filter it. But if you live in a community, a town or a city, it's public water, right? And it's supplied through public pipes and it's usually it's filtered and charter oak. Um, Travis probably can laugh about this. We had some issues with getting the right balance in the chemicals. They had like too much magnesium and all of a sudden our toilets and our showers and tubs look pink, you know? And then next thing you know, once it's done and they finally fix it, they finally get the letter out telling us, oh, you know, it's real not safe to drink. You should probably get some bottled water for cooking too. But there's people who say, hey, that's a, that's a right, not a privilege. And yeah, you pay for it, but that's what a utility is. It's not a private corporation. A utility has regulations on it saying that you can't charge, you can't gouge, you can, you know, you can charge only a certain amount. It's not about getting a profit, it's about providing a service. Police, fire, ambulance, you know. So, question is, do you have a right to internet access? Is that a right or privilege? No comments, no opinions? So, here's kind of where we're getting. We're getting to a point where, um, you know, 200 some nations in the United Nations are talking about whether or not internet access is, is a right. Because if you don't have it, are you able to get education? Are you able to get a job? Now, I'm not saying it is or isn't, but it is something that people are talking about. And with, for instance, the pandemic right now. Now, communities like us or smaller towns, not everybody has internet. Maybe they have phone. But that doesn't mean that you're getting on to Schoology, you know, and if you use your hotspot to be able to have Wi-Fi for your Chromebook, that eats up, that eats up your data. Not everybody can afford an unlimited data plan. Okay, so we were talking about uh, access to uh, communication, access to information, access to employment. Because it used to be, you go to a place, you fill out a paper application when you want a job. Now, you go around Onomar or Denison and an awful lot of those places, McDonald's and Walmart, not just a, a, a lawyer's office or a business. You now, some of these major places that are just restaurants, you know, Burger King and Baumgars, they want you to apply online first. Go to this website. Okay, so is it harder? It doesn't mean you can't get a job, but is it harder to get a job if you don't have a phone or you don't have a laptop or you don't have internet access? Question or comment there, Mr. Gross? Um, oh, that was an awesome question because that's, kind of that's kind of a pandemic question. Um, I was seeing it before March. I was seeing it last year, you know, um, it may be that there are places that it's safety sake. It may be places that it's convenient for them. You know? um, but so I, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think? Because for a lot of us, I, you know, I know I'm on this way, our, our gut reaction when we start talking about access as a right or a privilege is, yeah, what, right. You, you should have to pay if you want to watch Netflix or you want to play, um, you know, World of Warcraft or, you know, whatever video game or that you're playing. 
and I, I don't know how Mr. Versani feels about this, but as a teacher, that's one of those things that if I walk around behind you and I see that you're playing a game or watching something during, even during study hall, not during a regular class, I'm like, really, your parents' tax dollars are paying for you to learn, not for you to use up bandwidth to be, you know, entertained. That's not just a discipline thing or classroom management thing or distraction thing. I mean, that's, so let's look at each question one at a time instead of that broader issue, okay? In our area, does everyone have equal opportunities as far as technology use is concerned? Is this too boring or just too difficult? I will tell you kids, just because you have it, doesn't mean everybody, all your classmates or all your neighbors have it. You know, and I know some people get frustrated, oh, they can afford a new car, or I noticed a satellite dish on the side of their house, but the paint looks awful, or they need a new roof, or the kids are raggedy clothes. So what are their priorities? That's kind of a way that people get to, they, they judge. You know, and I'm not here to talk about poverty or, or politics, but I'm just saying, I don't know that everybody has equal access. Because even if you have access to Wi-Fi, hey, I, you know, the reason I have an SE is I can't afford a 10 or 11. Kids were making fun of me for having a five for how many years. You know, I, I had an alumni come back at a football game and, and said, hey, the 2000s called. They want their phone back. They're making fun of me. And I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. I don't have $800 or $1,200. And I know, I understand the way it works is you're not only paying for data and paying for the service, but you're also making, you're making payments on the phone instead of necessarily paying up front. But, you know, some kids, their parents can afford it, and the kid has a phone when they're in second grade. Their kids, you may not have noticed, but not every high school kid has a phone. Uh, does everybody have the opportunity to be involved in a digital society? And if they do, then why do you have all of these computers with Wi-Fi and a sign-up and you can only use it for 20 minutes and then take a break at public libraries? They're trying to provide that access to people that may not. Now, here's this third bullet, and again, I'm sorry if it's if it's boring. We'll get to the next slide, but um, and again, I do want to tread lightly because I don't want to turn this into a political kind of thing. Uh, I really want you to think uh, sociologically, historically, philosophically. You know, when you have a divide, when you have division haves and have nots. Maybe it's money, maybe it's housing, maybe it's clothing. Some people, when I was going to uh, middle school and high school, uh, you would get made fun of if you didn't have the right kind of jeans or the right kind of shirt or the right kind of shoes. Okay, so is that happening now? People, just like this, uh, Iowa versus Iowa State and Ford versus Chevy, and John Deere versus International Harvester. Guess what? There's Galaxy versus Apple. You know, people judge Apple you. Now, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, okay. So you're doing more listening than you are talking, and it worries me when you get up and walk around because then I'm not sure that you're thinking. So let me give you something to write. So here's a here's a clue then for you, Jenna. And I don't know if you saw it, Jenna, but Okay. This is under number one, access. It's not an answer to any one of those questions. This is the notes now. So for future going on, Jenna or Tommy or Garrett, if anybody is watching, the orange pages you don't have to write down, but the black pages you do. So we're still on number one. We're still on digital access. Okay. Full 
electronic participation in society. And summarize this, abbreviate it, use shorthand, get rid of the articles, that's a part of speech, A and uh, those are, well, the uh, and A are articles, conjunctions, you know, like and, those kind of things, maybe use a plus sign or an ampersand. At any rate, I'll read it to you, because a lot of times you don't hear it or think about it when you're writing it down. If you read it to yourself, you might understand it. But when you're writing it down, you're not always necessarily. So here, here goes. Not everyone has the same opportunities when it comes to technology. Digital exclusion makes it difficult to grow as a society increasingly uses those tools. You know, if, if now we are kind of living in two worlds, the physical material world and the virtual or electronic world, right? If all of us are cyborgs, you know, because essentially your phone uh, is a, uh, it, 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 it's an, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like an artificial limb, you know? Oh, I keep doing this and I'm sorry if the rest of you aren't into Mar Marvel movies like, uh, like that is. But um, when the Senate uh, committee is arguing with Tony Stark about whether Iron Man is a weapon or whether he is Iron Man, and I forget what he calls the suit, but he, he calls it, uh, uh, again, it's like a false arm. You know, not an appendage, but uh, anyway. <clears throat> All of us are this way, okay? Now that we have a computer plugged into our head or a focular implant for hearing, <clears throat> but all of us use our phones and our computers. You know, it's a little bit like your car. Yeah. Um, well, if that's the way the world is now, then those people that don't have access to it, you know? <clears throat> a little left out. So the next sentence, uh, helping to provide and expand access to technology should be the goal of all digital citizens. In other words, you want everybody to have what you have. You want everybody to be equal, then you want everybody to have access, okay? We're gonna have equality in cyberspace or in, in virtual reality or electronically, then we need to have equality with access to it. Third sentence then. So it looks like there's so much to write, but it's really just three sentences. So third sentence, because some people have limited access, we need to be committed to sure that no one is denied digital access. Now, we're not saying some people are driving Cadillac Escalades and some people are driving, um, you know, Ford Pintos or Volkswagen Beetles or um, AMC Pacers from the 1970s, but everybody's got a vehicle. Okay. Part of that analogy comes from uh, back in the 80s and 90s, uh, well, World Wide Web in the 90s when it started up, they talked about it as the information superhighway. Okay, so are you on the gravel roads and one lane side roads and surface streets, or are you able to get on that six lane and eight lane freeway with everybody else? Okay, Looking around, I'm, I'm not seeing people still going. Dana, is it okay to go to the next slide? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Digital commerce. <clears throat> Let me make sure, yep. There's only one big question here, okay. Digital commerce, electronic buying and selling. And the question for you to think about is, what opportunities and problems are there associated with purchasing things online? I, um, I mean, I'm old, I'm a middle-aged guy. I like to see what I'm buying. I like to, you know, I don't always try it on, but I want to check the label and see what size it is. 
Well, I, I guess I'm just on that way. I'd rather go into uh, um, Baumgars and shop around. And uh, if I don't like what I see there, then maybe I'll go to a tractor supply store or I'll go to Target or Walmart and try and find it. But my wife and all three of my daughters, they're just on their phone, kind of like uh, Gary Groves right now. I'm not sure why he thinks it's okay to be on his phone during class. <laughs> I do all their shopping on Amazon. You know, so it's no wonder that that guy that the CEO, Bezos, I think his name, is that not only was he a multi-billionaire to begin with, but since March of 2020 is a multi-billionaire. People are afraid to touch things or they're afraid to be with other people or don't want to get sick. <clears throat> and I don't blame them. Here I am with my mask off. I shouldn't be doing that, but at least I'm six feet away from all y'all. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, what are what are other problems besides hackers? And what what's the problem with hackers? That they're going to take your money. They're going to do more than take your money. They can take your identity, Mackenzie. They could be tricking you, fooling you. It could be, oh hey, you're going to get so many thousand dollars, but to get the process going, I need you to give me three hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, keep going, Mackenzie. Sure, she's going to share a story. Can you stop the bottle tossing and listen? Thank you, Garrett. Well, I, so we all need to be quiet and listen. I'll, I'll ask her to try to speak up, but go ahead, Ken. So they don't want to be paid with a check or with cash or with money order. They want to be paid in Best Buy card. Again, nothing against your grandpa, but, you know, I, I don't know if you guys are a little more savvy, maybe because you grew up with the Internet. But boomers are one of the biggest targets for this kind of thing. Gave me a Social Security card. Uh, it, it, yeah, they're, you know, they don't always understand how the internet or why the internet works the way it does. I want to give you a huge one. Um, well, I don't think I need to necessarily write this down on a board. I think I can say it and, and uh, Jen is going to get it. Okay. You've all learned in the last month, HTTP, right? Even if you don't see that in your browser or the address bar, Okay, even if somebody like my, my web address is maladjusted.us. I just have to write maladjusted.us. I don't have to have www. I don't have to have HTTP. But it's always in there, right? It's hypertext. Um, yeah, H for hyper, T for text, T for transfer, P for protocol. And we talked about protocol as a set of rules. Synonym for protocol it can be uh, syntax or it can be algorithm. Okay. When you're about to buy something, when you're about to pay, okay, one thing it's safer to do it with a credit card and not a debit card. Debit cards, which you're more likely to have as a teenager, is a check it's more easier to cash and check card. It's easier to hack easier to get the month, uh, information off of those than a, a credit card. And I know you're all under 18, so if you are buying things online, you're probably borrowing a parent's credit card. <laughs> Sometimes you get a prepaid uh, credit card or card. Those might work. But credit card is safer than debit. Here's the next thing. And I would love to tell your parents the same thing. Now you may as well on to your parents and your boomer grandparents. You've got to have an S, S for secure. Look in the URL. And sometimes if you're using a phone instead of a, a computer or a laptop, you're not able to see that. So it's another reason it makes me nervous about people that are buying stuff on their phones. But it can't just be HTTP. It has to be HTTPS. The S means it's encrypted, 
and they can't, you, you've got a level of security there and they aren't going to be able to hack it. I no, that's a question. That's movies. No, no. We can get in later on in the year. We can get into things uh, like the so-called dark web. I think, in fact, in the slideshow in the next few days, we, we'll probably get into a thing called the black market. You know, uh, this is a hard time focusing. <clears throat> I got a way, way simple one. Okay, and I'm embarrassed myself by telling you this story. Okay, it may never happen to you, but you know, it could. So, when my dad was uh, sick and he was passing away, uh, I don't know, like six years ago now, uh, he had cancer and he had Parkinson's and he was about 82. And so, you know, my, my mother and my brother and sister are all said, you should probably come back. You know, you, at least we don't know how long he's got. He's supposed to have this surgery coming up next week. You know, you better, better see him. This might be your last chance. Well, my dad always loved uh, history. And, of course, my mom always loved art. And both of them liked books. So that's why you're a history. Bit easy B. I'm kind of combined there. And I'm in the airport. And there's this book. And it's about both. It's about World War II. It's about a, a unit that was tasked with protecting or reclaiming, uh, you know, famous artworks, right? Because the Nazis were stealing them. It's a monuments man. And it said, you know, so many months, uh, uh, it turned into a movie, right? George, you do it. George Clooney and, and Bill Murray and I forget who all is in it. So I was excited. I thought it was going to be a gift, especially if my dad pulled through and made it a few more months. You know, maybe my, my mom could, when she visited him in the nursing home, she could read him. Well, I got into it on the plane. I was reading this book, and I was so into it. I was like a quarter way done, and it's a thick old book. So here's finally where my story is. So I go ahead and give it to my mom and dad as a gift. But I want it, too, because I want to finish it. I order it online, and I'm cheap. I don't want to spend $40 on a book from Amazon. So I go to Amazon has this thing where you can get used books from participating used bookstores. I think it's Sherry's Treasure Chest in Soldier is one of those kind of places. And so I order it online, and it comes. And I have a mail it to school instead of mailing it to home. So it's in my faculty mailbox, and don't. Walk over there. Uh-huh. I walk over uh, to the faculty mailbox, there's this package, yay, and I come over during lunch and I open it up. I'm so excited. I love this book. I'm waiting to finish it. And I open it up and I'm looking at the pictures and the maps because I'm a history buff. And it's in German. And they go, okay, well, it's about World War II and it's the Nazis. And so one of the things, like the Nuremberg Laws, and I forget the name of the, oh, the Nero plan, the Nero memo was that uh, Hitler. Uh, told all of his officers, you got to destroy all these things. If uh, the certain line, you know, once the, the allies make it to Berlin or something, I don't destroy the evidence or just deny people stuff that you stole from them. But the Nero was like, you're burning because Nero was a Roman emperor and he burned Rome, uh, arson kind of thing. And so I, okay, so they're explaining. But then I go to the start to start reading it because it's my lunch period. And it's all in German. <laughs> I, you know, so oh, I don't know that somebody scammed me. I, it's just an example of one of those things. Maybe I didn't look close enough. I thought, oh, I've done this before. I know what I'm doing. I'm just not, I wasn't as careful. Or maybe it's one of those things. I'm a middle-aged guy, and I'd rather see what I'm buying before I buy it in person than to just buy it online. But, yeah. So here I spent $14. I thought I saved that money. Of course, then I have to be shipping and handling. So I think I'm getting it for 25% of the price of a new copy. But what am I going to do with it? Because I don't reckon. <laughs> so it's just something that you want to be aware of. Okay, so it wasn't all that funny. I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, 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 Mox next.
not 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 much, not really. So, yeah, this I don't know. This is probably where we should end up leaving today. Yeah, because we only have about five minutes. We're only got through two today, and there, there's nine. <clears throat> but again, and we got three sentences. It looks real long, like it's just cut off a terrible paragraph. And I didn't notice that Mackenzie was taking her wrist because it hurt so much when she was done. But abbreviate, summarize, okay? You definitely need to make sure that you have number two, digital commerce. You definitely want to make sure that you have electronic buying and selling. Okay, if you're Andy, maybe you're going to take a picture of this. If you're Jenna, maybe you're going to take a screen grab of it. But remember, you can only use handwritten notes on the quiz. It is open note, but handwritten. At any rate, I'll read it to you. Here's what it says. A great deal of the economy is now being done electronically. That's just the way it is. And that, yeah, that did get hyped up big time due to the pandemic talking about some not irreparable but some of the economic damage to like new york city and boston it could be 10 20 30 years before your business is just closed down because they don't have enough business to be able to afford to stay open anymore so it's not like if bezos is some evil genius that came up with this great idea that you can order stuff online it's just the more technology we have, and the easier it is to buy and sell online, the more it can happen. I know I have a friend that's a newspaper publisher, and you know it's harder and harder to get people to buy ads to her print paper copy. So she's looking at, well, do you find people that will underwrite you? That will, you know, it's like GoFundMe. Or also, do you have an online edition of your newspaper and people will pay to get online versions at a website instead of a printed one? And that purchase is um, yeah, that's a pretty important part. Since we're going to be done here in a, in a couple seconds, let me read it more quickly and maybe we can pick up and have some discussion uh, tomorrow. But yeah, you know. Uh, you still got an equal amount of goods and services uh, that maybe are in conflict. Uh, for instance, gambling. You know, gambling may be legal in uh, Nebraska, but it's not legal in Iowa, except on Indian reservations. Or marijuana may be legal in California and Colorado, but it's not legal in Nebraska or Iowa. Well, I guess all of the you're writing notes, right? Handwritten notes. I'm not encouraging pornography. I'm saying, in fact, that's one of the dangerous things. You know, the things that some communities may be okay with, other communities are definitely not. But if the internet is everywhere, stuff that you don't want in your community is everywhere. So that's something that we're going to need to, we'll talk about it. And then when you're assigned your pages for digital citizenship, one of you is going to be dealing with this issue. We'll definitely want to be careful about it. <laughs> and I'll put this back up tomorrow. Let's all share it on Schoology. So if you need to get to your next class, you don't have to stay right here. A homeroom. Oh no. I would think so. Unless you see him out in the hallway. The superintendent. Yeah. 
Strangle, strangle, Steve. Oh, you're gone already, Jenna. Now, this time, I'm okay if it records. So, if I hit end, it should start recording, right? Yeah, end meeting.